the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. And I tell you what, we I thought I had a real, I do believe, and this is a real good Bible session uh, that that you would love that's talking about for me some of the root causes for hate in, in this country and in, and in this world. And I, I, I kept trying to figure, especially when we talk about the, the black and white issues, uh, what do we see? Uh, any other minority groups too, or ethnic groups too. You know? uh, what 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 could cause such sometimes such hatred uh, to occur, especially from the past, come up from the during the slave trade and the Jim Crow laws? Uh, even though you got modern day religion today, there's still issues, right? You see, when 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 I don't know, a police officer can be like quick to pull a gun on somebody that. It's a minority group that has a registered gun, and it's like, ooh. So they, they actually get into a point where they they feel that they got to, they become fearful. And, and any sudden moves or something like that, they're ready to shoot. And then when you see when they have their own uh, ethnic group, you don't see that instinct to to defend themselves, to, to shoot first or to shoot once they feel that they have a fear in their in their heart. And I was kind of, you know, I always kind of think about it as basically racism based on just color of skin. And and this study shows you as we wrap up like this one, is that some of the things that occurred uh, in the slave trade in the slavery in this country and in probably the rest of the world, but I'm just talking about this country first right now. Uh, this is where I live, right? Is the the fact that a lot of cases if you look at in the report that you'll see in the uh, video, uh, a lot of cases when we look at the South and the the battle that happened or the things that happened in slavery is normally with the slave owner and the slaves, right? With a few overseers in the account. Well, what we don't see a lot of cases, and it's not talked about, and that's one of the, the out of our reading, or the resource I was looking at, it was showing that, that not only were the slaves oppressed and forced to do work. But did you know, because of the fact that the plantations in the South were the, the, the economic engine in the South, I mean, most of the wealth was generated because of the plantations. They're like factories to a degree. Uh, and it was ran on by slaves. Did you know that most uh, poor people white and, and people of color that were free, they're not slaves. Because there's people that were, people of color that came from Europe as well to this country. Uh, and so I'm not just indentured servants and, and so forth. But the, the, the slaves were the ones that was captured in Africa and brought to this country. And they was that workforce that generated the income for the plantations. They, they developed skilled workers and unskilled workers. And what it did, uh, a bad product of that, was that it actually cut out the ability for most poor people, that were not slaves, to get income that could lead to them to prosper. Uh, they had, it was sold to them that say, look, you're better than a slave. And that should be great. You have a status better than a slave. But it didn't put food on the table. It didn't create income for them because they couldn't get a job. A lot of them couldn't get jobs. Uh, because, at least on the plantations, 
because that's what the slaves were doing. You know what I mean? Think about it. And what happened is that a lot of resentment between the poor and the slaves kept building for three to four hundred years, really four hundred years, and even after slavery, then we started seeing the, you know, the different lynching and uh, the Jim Crow laws, and, you know, all the way up to the civil rights movement, and then even modern day lynching today, are really byproducts of the resentment that most of the uh, poor people in the South built toward the slaves and saying, you're, you're keeping me from getting a job. Many, many of the poor had to actually leave the South and move out west as you know, uh, as our country was expanding, uh, to to get opportunity. Opportunity was greater there than in the South. But at the same time, this the report I was looking at actually brought them, they took their resentment with them as they spread it from the South toward the West, or even if they moved to the North. And and that's where I think you see most of the uh, anger that has prepared you. It's not, it's not based merely on the color of the skin, is what I'm trying to say. And it's not based on, uh, it's, on it's only based on where you came from, basically slaves from Africa. Uh, but it, just if you do more research, and I think you, many of you have done that, there were slaves in, uh, not slaves, there were people of color in Europe. <laughs> that, that's, that's a known fact. Uh, and in fact, some of the biblical days themselves, we talk about where, 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 where did Christ and them come from, or the Middle Eastern people come from. Yeah, they come from the Africa or the or Asia, uh, and those are normally places where people of color come from. And in most early stages, most of the paintings and pictures and stuff really were people showing Jesus, Yeshua, and other people of people of color. They're just people of color. They, they can be light skinned or they can be dark skinned. Uh, they can be African. I mean, Jesus, the Hebrews, the Israelites, they were in Africa, Egypt, for hundreds and years, and then they just moved over, uh, <laughs> over to Israel. Israel is connected to Egypt, uh, as well as to the Middle East. So uh, that's region is not European, you know, and yet many people painted pictures and stuff of, of, the, of Christ being a European. It's like there were no Europeans in Africa <laughs> during those times. The only European that came was the ones that conquered, eventually conquered Europe. I mean, uh, that Middle Eastern area. That was the Roman Empire. And that this clearly indicated who were Romans uh, during the time of Jesus, Yeshua. And it's very clear they came from Europe and they conquered um, the Middle East. But Christ was born from one of those people. He was born from the lineage of Christ that's from Africa and Asia. Middle Eastern. That's that's it. it our census actually class said last week our census actually classified for reasons I, I don't know that the people from Egypt Iran, Iraq, Middle East, Africa, Northern Africa are people white. I, I don't, they're not European white, I'm so they are not, they're people of color. That's the bottom line of that. But the anger though really was the byproduct of slavery. It was an economic situation. People can't prosper when you have a poor, when you have a labor situation where people can't get into it and, 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 and prosper from it. So that's how I, that's how I was looking at this study today as we move forward. Is, is the fact is that it's been about resources, the power, money. You know, people want to have the cash system. People want to have some. Or people want to have some uh, level. Most people want some kind of level of respect. Uh, equality is something you know sometimes become a very negative word to some people because. They, people don't really want equality, they, 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 they want advancement. And, and the people they really need to understand in the eyes of God, because God doesn't have a problem with the rich, God doesn't have a problem with the poor. God loves all of us, and I know some people don't care about that, and that's up to you, but we, we as believers in Christ, he, he loves us. He loves all of us. 
He loves you whether you're a Christian or not a Christian. Because we're talking about the God who created mankind, right? God created man in the beginning. He created man. Male and female created he them. He blessed them. He said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, right? So, so we are all made in the image of God. What does somebody want to be? You can't say different, even though you want to. But that's not how it goes. We're all made in the image of God. We must know that. Most people, unless you, unless you just outright born to be a friend about it, you, we're all made in the image of God. So God blessed all of us. And Christ, the gospel, was to restore and redeem man so that we can be one in Christ to the Father. And that's how we should be. But what the enemy, the God of this world, does is try to create division so that we can fight each other. And, and that's really a no-win scenario when you think about it. Who wants to be in a perpetual war? Who wants to be in a perpetual oppression of people just because of color of skin or based on where they came from? We can't. Our world, our life, we will move forward as we move as one. We will prosper. Everyone will be, and the Bible talks about being content. And the fact is that as long as we, everybody has the basic qualities of life, we should endorse that and we should encourage that. And then if people move in different statuses based on their skills and their gifts, then let that be. You know, somebody got to be in the government, somebody got to be a general, somebody got to be a private or an airman, somebody got to be, those things exist. Somebody has to be in the leadership role as we organize and do things and try to do it effectively. But God is saying those things are not meant to be able to beat somebody else to get ahead. It's supposed to encourage one another so we can all survive. We love one another. We should love one another. And we should sit there and encourage and build one another. That's even what the Bible talks about the body of Christ, the edifying of the church, the building up, to do the work of the ministry, to serve God and glorify Him. But all the glory goes to God, not the vain glory of people trying to go up for themselves, or the vain glory of people trying to say that we're going to come skin, things are supposed to happen. So I, I really think you to enjoy this session. I think it, it has a lot of good information in it and uh, discussion. That, that we all should be aware of and just realize, let's let's move behind, let's use, let's put this this color thing behind. I, I know to some people say, well, it may benefit you, but see, if I'm, if I'm a different color, it don't benefit me. Yes, it does. Because who wants to sit there and, and look for the police force, who wants to be in the fact that you, you, you actually either hate or fear for your life to the point that you, you're gonna you're gonna have to shoot somebody and kill somebody. And whether you've been taught that that person is not a person, I know you don't think that way anymore. I mean, it was in the past, but I know you don't think that way now. This is a tragedy to be able to kill somebody. And take somebody's life and recognize that that person has a family, has a mother, has a father, has children. That's a tragedy to have that on you your conscience and you did it because of a perception that's just i know people want to live that way i know police also want to live that way and i know that even we talk about the people that are gang members and so forth killing one another you know you really don't want to bring your community down you don't really don't want to have create junkies and then junkies become basically your slave and, and do anything you want them to do to include breaking laws steal and everything else just to get ahead. You, you know you don't want to live that life. I know you feel like you've been pushed into that life, but you don't want to live that life. And I know that the answer is when we all learn to work together and love one another and help one another, we can we can thrive to, to make everyone be successful. At least in the sense of being able to have a home, have a job, have money in their pockets, you know, nobody asks them to be, nobody want to be, everybody have to be rich. You know, if you do, that's, then you work to be rich. And we don't want you to have any obstacles for you to be rich. And if you just want to just enjoy your life, enjoy your career, that's what we, that's what we want to be able to, to do that. We want to be able to have police stops and traffic stops and not be risk of being killed. You know what I mean? 
those type of things that we can we can live without. We can live without racism. It, it doesn't do anything for us, amen. So that's what we're going to talk about, and this kind of like using the wrap of the Black History Month, uh, from my perspective, and using my platform, because we're going to always talk about the fact is that Christ wants us to be one. John 17, he said, I have given them that word so they may be one. So we want to be one. So that's what we'll talk about. And always want to do, here's the topic, and then we always want to do the Lord's Prayer. And this is, so this is session one. So I may send out two, well, I will send out two sessions today. But the, the, the whole point is that we need to look at the root cause of wars and racism and everything else and let's take those things off the table all right and i know that's not going to be easy but that's we got to start somewhere we got to recognize what's the root cause it's not color skin but it's really about these things these factors that have been throughout history not just because of color skin this has been more based on you see my title what is the root cause of hate in this world Money, resources, or power. Or sometimes all three of those things play the role in people going to war, killing other people, oppressing other people for resources, money, or power. So we need to make sure that we need to get past that and then start recognizing that when Christ said in John 13, 34, a new commandment I given to you that you love one another. As I have loved you, did you also love one another? And 35 itself said that <laughs> the world or men will know you by disciples for the love that you show one another. Let's do that. Because I think it's, it's, for, it's not just for us, it's for our children and children's children. If not, we're going to see the things that's going on in Russia and Ukraine. We're going to continue to see this type of stuff that's going to really lead and could lead to Third World War and use of nuclear weapons, there's not going to be any benefit to anybody. It's not going to benefit their country, it's not going to benefit our country, it's not going to benefit any other country. It's not going to benefit the world at all. They're destroying one another. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense at all. So let's learn to, to get out of these root causes and start doing what's necessary. So that's the title that we have for today. And let's do our Lord's Prayer as we go into the next session. As you see right here, like I said, the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew 6, verse 9, it said, After the man therefore pray, Y'all Father which are in heaven, I, once again, I could continue to reiterate that is, Father means a personal relationship, meaning also that you are a child of God. If you come to God, the Father, you're saying, I am your child. You are my parent. Our Father, which are in heaven, I'm talking this way, we're saying our Father is in heaven. We're not talking about any pagan God, we're not talking about the devil, we're not talking about ourselves, we're talking about God the Father, which is in heaven. All be that name, glorify Him, because He created us. We're here because of Him. If you don't know that, <laughs> I'm telling you, you ain't here for yourself. I know you didn't do it. That kingdom come, be this, a king in the kingdom. And his way, his system, it's a system that we are thriving to live by. And I guarantee you, racism and all that stuff is not part of the kingdom of God. And I challenge anybody to say it differently. Thy will be done. His will is in his word. Not the will of man, not the will of people who want to oppress you, not the will of people who want to hate you, but the will of God is the will that we want in our life. And it says, in earth as it is in heaven. That will be done in earth as in heaven. Look and read the word for yourself to see what his will is for you. If you have a will that's contrary to the word of God, then you want to line up with the word of God. If you have a will that calls you to hate people, hurt people, do bad things to people, then you need to recognize that that's not God's will. And it's not going to benefit you in the long run. So think about it. His will be done. See, I don't know about you, but you can see that I will definitely, as a person of color, wants to do, go by God's will instead of your will or anybody else's will that has bad intentions and selfish reasons. I'd rather go by God's will. And His will is for all men to be saved. That's what the Word says. He says, 
and give up this day. What I like about this, and I always keep reminding you is, yesterday is gone. The tragedy, the hate, and all that stuff that happened to people, those are gone. That day, those days are gone. Those are days called history. But what we're talking about the fact is that we got this day to do better. This day to move forward. This day, this day to love one another. Amen. And yet, the tomorrow's not promised. And you know, you keep sitting there with uh, Russia and Ukraine sitting there, and this is one joke was in there threatening nuclear weapons. We, 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 tomorrow is not promised. But let's pray and believe that God is in control and tomorrow you will have. All right? And preach it every day because you don't know when your morrow, my morrow, or anybody else's morrow won't happen. But so this way, appreciate the day, appreciate your life, appreciate the benefit. You go visit a hospital sometimes, you can see how many people that are injured. Or go to the, you can go visit a prison system. You can go visit, you can just visit bad places and, 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 and see that you're blessed. And then maybe you have an opportunity to help those people too. We make sure you're more blessed. Amen. All right. He said, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt for us. And that's the point I'm trying to tell you. Far as I'm concerned, the, the tragedies from the slave trade, the Spanish position, the crusades, and, and any other tragedies that occurred, those people are forgiven because I don't want to be forgiven. And some of you sit there and say, well, I don't need to forgive. Yes, you do. Most of us, I don't know, the Bible said all sin comes short of the glory of God. So if you can sit there and say you're not sinning, you got some issues. You're lying to yourself. So I want to be forgiven. So we forgive those, not only the people who messed with you, did something to you uh, a few weeks ago, yesterday. You want to forgive them because you don't want yourself not to be forgiven. And that's what's going on in the scripture going to say. So learn to forgive one another. That, I think that'll help move away from resentment and hate. Because based on that topic I'm telling you talking about today, I really thought I was tripping on the fact is that the resentments of the poor, poor whites and poor blacks, against the slaves was targeted toward the slaves. And the slaves said, and I hope we all recognize this, that the slaves did not come here on their own. They did not come here by choice. <laughs> There was not a cruise ship that they came on, and there was not a great life that they was living. They were living in the substandard conditions, and so therefore, don't, don't, why are you going to resent them? They weren't the ones who, who started slavery. They weren't the ones that built the planta plantations for themselves. No, no, that was, that was slave owners, right? People with wealth that did that stuff. It seemed like you should have focused toward them, not focused toward the the slave, but that's what exactly happened. People sit there and blame the victim for their conditions, opposed to just recognizing. You can't, you don't blame victims. I know you want to, I know you feel like you should, I think you feel like, well, I, I, I want my status. Well, the status of being, if you, if you, if your status, if you're in a status that's low, low, and the only thing that will make you happy is that somebody lower than you, uh, you 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 got a problem because see you're still low, and you're still in a condition that it's not going to make you be recognized or give you a greater status. So you don't want to sit there and resent somebody that's below you. You want to sit there and say, how could I move up? And why and why don't hey look and they can move them up too, so that we all can strive to do better. Amen. At least that's my that's that's my position on it. I think it makes sense, but. Uh, some people don't think so, but if you sit there and fight, to me it's like fighting crumbs, you know, fighting for crumbs, opposed to trying to get the bread. Uh, and and good thing I like the old little year that, you know, like the, the, the bread came down from heaven. <laughs> That's what he said, give us this day out there, the bread, got it, you know. Instead of fighting for crumbs, go for the bread. And God has given us the bread. The bread is the sure. Woo! Boy, that's a oh, that's a t-shirt by itself. That's a message by itself. I'm about to oh, it'll come later in life. <laughs> he said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that's the key is if you want to, you don't want to be evil. So that when you think about it, when you pray, when this is being prayed and it's been prayed by people of <laughs> believers, they want to they, they if you operate in evil to do bad things, I'm talking about from killing somebody at the traffic stop, 
killers of matter because of drugs related crimes and trying to get over on people, uh, killing people uh, just for the anger, envy, jealousy, whatever like that. We're praying, you're praying every day to be delivered from that type of evil. And that's what a believer does when they're talking to our Father in heaven to deliver us from evil. Amen. We're going to get temptations, but He's not going to lead you in any temptation. At least God will not lead you into a temptation that's going to cause you to fail. Anything, any test, that's based on what temptation is. Any temptation means you can pass that test. And you need to pass the test. Because it's, it's, we know that the wages of sin is death. So let's learn to pass the test. And he will not test you unless you are able to pass the test. That's a blessing by itself. And he said, for thine is the kingdom. Once again, he reminds you, he's king. And it's his system we're talking about. We live in a, our constitution. It's a great constitution. I think our constitution, I think our country is great. And we live in this government. I think it's better than most governments out there. But the point is, though, is that the ultimate kingdom, the ultimate system, that we live with is the kingdom of God. Look at that and recognize the importance of that, amen? And the ultimate true power comes from God. If you want power, you get it from God. Instead of sitting there trying to get power from yourself by hurting and abusing other people and oppressing other people, seek the power that's eternal. Seek the power that is sustainable. Opposed to you like the Roman Empire, there's power. Did they had I mean, it looked huge, wasn't it? But it's, it's no longer power anymore, is it? And all the other kingdoms that have existed in the past, all of them sitting there creating themselves and creating their power by how they can manipulate and control other people, destroy other people. Those are all temporary powers. Because what, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. If you live by uh, uh, your power base is based on hurting and oppressing people, eventually it's going to happen to you. So let's not do that. So let's look at the power to sustain God's power. Amen. And the glory. Stop trying to go where I call vain glory. It's not looking at the glory that comes from God himself. To you, glorify God. He'll glorify you. But we, we got we to gotta recognize the importance of glorifying him and recognize that the only true glory is the glory that comes from God. I sit there and you think about it, when you look at sports players and stuff like that, those who won Super Bowls, like Super Bowls one or Super Bowl two, the Green Bay Packers, you know what I mean? And then the, 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 the Lombardi uh, Trophy and all that. Those were some glorious days. But they were, and they no longer. Most of the people not even alive, right? It was, it was for the moment, it was a season. And some people kill for those seasons. But seasons come, the seasons go. But if we sit there and look at the glory that comes from God, we're talking about eternal glory. Not only blessings we're here, living in the kingdom, living under his protection, dwelling in the secret place here, the glory also is in heaven, eternal glory. Strive for that, not vain glory, amen? So that's the thing that you said, amen, is happening in the Lord's Prayer. And just remember this, it said 14, for if you give men the trespass, you have to follow us to forgive you. But if you give men not the trespass, you have to follow won't forgive your trespasses. Christ said that. And, and the, exactly, when I look at the study, we're going to talk about the fact is that resentment between the poor and the slaves if resentment is really mean, I'm not going to forgive them, I'm going to despise them, I'm going to hate them. And they took that even when they moved toward the West to, to, to help build this country, took that hate, meaning took that unforgiveness, not even giving it, uh, the rest now to say they, it's not their fault. And I just want you to know that but my ancestors that came here, it wasn't their fault. They didn't, they didn't volunteer. They didn't try to get a ticket to get on a slave ship. They didn't. They were forced here. And if they're forced here, you really should give people some sympathy for that instead of sitting here trying to say, I hate them. You, you don't hate. You know, just like you really, when you talk about the drug addictions and everything else, and you hate the drug addict. It's the drug addict, it's, it's not the, the person that's bringing the drugs in. 
The drug addict is not the one that was made to become a drug addict. It was the people who pushed those drugs in. Those people who pushed drugs in the community, like, like some of that stuff came in from unknown government sources or something, pushed into black communities. You know, crack cocaine, all that stuff. And it was like stupidity. Because what's the purpose? What, what benefit to have junkies, right? What benefit to even have people live in a perpetual state of poverty uh, or be oppressed? What, what, it doesn't benefit nobody. We can't move forward by turning each other down. We move forward by building each other up. That's what makes America great if we want to be great. But if we want to go back to the past when we suppress one another, hurt one another, keep one another down, we want to go back to the back of continuous systemic, systematic uh, racism. If we, if we want to sit there and try to erase our history like what's going on in Florida and Texas, if we want to sit there and erase history, you sit there and say, what is your problem? You, when something happened, it happened, and you, there's no way you're going to try to avoid history. History is... That's the problem. When it's done, it's done. It's just like a criminal record. Once a person got a criminal record, they got it. They ain't going nowhere. Well, there's a, there are criminal things that we have done in this country. They, they, they're, they're recorded, they're documented. And they sit there and think we can hide it from people. Or we'll sit there and say, well, it's trying to make people feel bad. Let us reconcile those things. Let us start getting to say, look, the order to keep from repeating the past. And the thing about sometimes when you talk about repeating the past, it has a tendency where they want to sit there with the reversal. In other words, the people who did the oppression are now the ones that oppress. And the person who were oppressed are now the ones that are oppressing. And that creates a number in the never ending cycle that gets nowhere. So people will listen, let's let's not continue a cycle that of destruction, but a cycle of life and peace. That's, that's my position. That's what the word position is. And Christ said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. God bless you. I hope you enjoy these uh, sessions that's coming up. I think it's great. I believe it's great. God bless you. I'll check you later. See you when I see you. Hope you enjoy the next session. I hope you enjoy this one as well. God bless you. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.